Guys, what is going on out there today? Brent Abel, webtennis.com. And what I've got for you today is a short video on what I call the tennis confidence formula. And there's really two parts to our game. There's sort of two areas when we play a match where we've really got to be confident. And uh, the first area is in between points, right? So we've got those 25 seconds in between points. And if you don't spend that time well, if you don't manage that time well, I mean, if you think about it, 25 seconds, that's about 75 to 80 percent of the match right there. So the points are really a, a very small part of the match. So what you do between points, how you manage that time, really sets you up to be able to play the points uh, as well as you possibly can. So let's start with that, that time between points. What I've got over the years, I've sort of developed a four-part system that when I'm disciplined to it, when I use it, especially against the really tough guys that I gotta play, I can, I really play my, I really play my best tennis. The first thing is right after the end of a point, I've got to go with the non-emotional response, meaning I've just chunked the easiest, fattest sitter in the entire world, and rather than going crazy and screaming out and making people think, well, gee, you know, I never do this, this is crazy, how did this happen? Uh, you know, or the other, <laughs> on the other side of the coin, running over, hitting a, you know, up the line screaming forehand winner, ESPN, 11 p.m. news, top 10 shots, giving it the old come on, either one of those situations or anything in between, you know what I got to do? I have got to go non-emotional. And the way that I do that is I go straight to the hook of a song, either an instrumental or a song that's got some words, and I've already I've already picked that song out before the match starts, and what that helps me do, that no matter what just happened, keeps me on an even keel. So for about the first five seconds, part one of this four-part routine is just humming to myself or singing to myself whatever that song is that I've picked out. I'm kind of a Van Morrison guy, so usually he's, he's the guy, he's the song that I'm going to, one of his songs. You obviously may have something else that works better for you. But the point is, is that you've got something tangible rather than just telling yourself, hey, don't respond, don't have any emotion. I've tried that, it never worked for me. Instead, I go to the hook of a song. That's about four or five seconds into it. Part number two is I take three or four deep breaths from my core, not from a pie in the chest, but really deep from the core. And if you've just played a long point, I mean, you gotta recover, right? You physically need that time to recover. On the other hand, if I'm returning serve and the guy throws in a double fault, I still go into that part two routine. I don't skip it. I wanna make sure that I keep these four parts going between points, no matter what just happened in that point. I'll probably keep the song going as well when I'm, when I'm doing those three or four deep breaths. Okay, part three of the four part between points routine and my apologies for having to stop and start this video. I got the Burtek trash trucks going back and forth here. I got the Palm Springs Airport deciding to change their takeoff pattern today. It's now going right over so we got about a 60 second window before the next airplane comes so here we go. Part three is after you've already gone ahead and you've done that even keel with a hook to a song, part two, you've gone to that three or four deep breaths from your core, part three, is there any strategy that you wanna to commit to to start the next point? Not how you're gonna win it, not how you're gonna finish the point. You never wanna be thinking, well, if I do this, then I'm gonna win the point. If I win the point, I'm gonna win the game. If I win the game, win the set. Here comes their jet. Uh, win the set, win the match, and then go in the clubhouse and, you know, I'm the man. You cannot do that. You can only think about how you want to start the point off and then see what happens. If you're serving, where do you want to serve to? Maybe it's time to serve in volley. Maybe it's time to serve and stay back. Maybe it's time to you know, serve to a different spot, different type of spin, whatever it is. But once you consider it, you got to commit to it. And, 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 and that's the way that you're going to start the point. If you're returning serve, you could be thinking, hey, the guy's been serving me here or out, out here, whatever it is. And if you get it, this is what you want to do. But when you're returning serve, you're not in charge like you are when you serve. So sometimes you can't be as committed to be saying, well, I'm going to always go to that, that corner over there, or I'm always going to do this or do that. You almost have to kind of react and see what kind of serve you've got coming in um, in terms of that type of commitment. 
And then the fourth thing that you got to do is a little positive self pump. And that positive self pump is right, here we go, here we go. And you know, there's too often where we think, yeah, I mean, I hope I don't screw this point up, right? Because either my, you know, let's say you're playing doubles. Boy, I really hope I return away from that server's partner. You know what? You're just putting negative thoughts in your mind. You got to go super positive, not with results, but super positive in terms of, okay, here we go, let's go. That's the four part between points routine that you got to practice. This is not like a light switch where, you know, if you're taking notes and you're writing this thing down or you watch the video again, you can't then just go out and just deploy this four part between points routine because it's just not going to feel natural for you. So I want you to get to practice it, think about it off the court, maybe kind of visualize yourself between points, you know, when you're off the court and, and just kind of go through that 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 four part routine that I just laid out there for you. Now what you've got to do during the points, there's three more things to building confidence once you get in the point. The first thing is you got to be thinking about spacing, right? Whenever your opponent plays a shot, whether it's to your right or to your left, you've always got to be thinking first, create the space with your feet. Too often what we do is we think shot choice. We see a ball coming over, we go, I'm going to play the ball over there. And unfortunately what happens is your intentions are great, but your feet are not and you get jammed up and you still try to force that shot choice over there. And you know what happens once we start to improvise, we start to create a boatload of unforced error. So rather than thinking shot choice first, think of spacing. I got to get the space. I got to get my feet to move me to the side of the path of that incoming ball. And shot choice is going to be instinctive. You've hit enough thousands upon tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of tennis balls that if you've got the right spacing, then you know what shot choice will become very instinctive for you. Okay, part two, what we've got to do during the point in terms of shot execution so that we become really confident with becoming a consistent shot maker is that too often, once you pick out your target, you pick out your target in a way that you're thinking, you know what, I'm going to just get this ball through over there. The guy's not going to be able to have a chance to get it. I'm going to hit a big winner here. I'm going to hit something that's not going to come back. Rather than thinking, I've got a target picked out and I'm going to go ahead and play my ball to that target. The difference between those two is when you think result about winning the point with this shot, we tend to rush, we tend to get the ball too early, not too late in that ideal contact zone, we tend to reach out a little bit too early. And once you do that, you know what happens is you end up getting miss hits, you shank, balls end up short in the court over there. You've got to allow the ball to get into its ideal pocket. And you know, your pocket for you, depending on how you play the, the game, let's say forehand for example, you might be from one extreme full western, full western forehand grip. That contact point, the ideal contact point is different than what I've got. I've got more of an old school kind of hybrid continental eastern forehand depending on the forehand that I want to hit. But the thing that you've got to let happen, you've got to let the ball get into the ideal pocket no matter what style of play. Uh, that you use. And again, if you think about result, you're going to rush that shot and get too far out in front. So instead, what I want you to do is think about target. And for me, target is not so much a spot on the, uh, on the court over there. It's much more about what's the height over the top of the net that I want this ball to go. And once I th don't think about result, but I just think about in terms of a spot above the top of the net, that's when I'll wait that extra nanosecond, wait, W-A-I-T, for the ball to get into the ideal pocket for contact. And then part number three of being a super confident shot maker out there, consistent shot maker, is that when you go through contact is that you don't, you don't, let's see, what's the term I want? I want you to trust, right? I don't want you to feel that, geez, I'm not sure. So you start to pick your head up, you start to pick your eyes up, and you start to look at the result before you've actually made contact. And 99% of the tennis players out there do that. And when you do, when you pick your eyes up too soon to do this, you end up actually pulling the swing path out of alignment way too early. So I want you to get confident that for a moment in time when, when you're down here through contact, you are not looking at the tennis ball. You are looking at the contact point and letting the racket finish on its own. Whatever 
length that takes for you, you've got to start to build that habit. You've got to start to build that habit where um, there's so much noise out here right now. Stay with me. Hang in there. Airplanes, uh, trash trucks, um, maintenance guys with big, big carts. It's all good. It's all good. Where was I? Oh, yes. Part three of becoming the confident, consistent shot maker is you want to build that habit of leaving your head, your eyes still through contact. All right, and once you do that, and we see Fed do this, how confident does he look when he doesn't peek, right? When he keeps his eyes down at that point of contact, it really has a confident look. And that's something that it's a habit that you can develop. You've just got to do it often enough to where you start to trust that you don't have to visually look up before you hit to see what's about to happen, either the result of your shot or to see where your opponent is. And I'm telling you, if you get out there with a, with a bucket of balls and you drop and hit forehands and you drop and hit backhands and you keep your head here and wait to hear the ball bounce over there, I'm telling you, you can go ahead, drop and hit. You can go, well, that went about three feet above the top of the net. That went about this depth. This had this kind of spin. You already know that just by the feel of the ball leaving the racket. So guys, those are the two areas that you got to work on. Between points, you got to go to the hook of a song, the three or four deep breaths. Consider a, any strategy that you want to start that next point with, and then a little positive self pump. And then during the shot, shot execution is about developing those three habits, which is going to be number one, think spacing first, right? Spacing first rather than shot choice. Make sure that you don't get too far out in front. That's right, here comes another airplane. Uh, make sure you don't get too far out in front uh, at contact because you want to you know, end the point as opposed to just go for a target over, over the top of the net. And then part three is really start to build that habit where you keep your eyes down through contact, whether it's a ground stroke, whether it's a volley, half volley. On the serve, keep your eyes up into it. You can see the racket pass through the ball. And if you're not seeing that, then you know what, you're really kind of pulling your head down too, too soon on that serve. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. And I'd like to apologize for the uh, Palm Springs Airport uh, takeoff pattern, but I don't have much control over that. Uh, same with Thursdays out here, the Burtek garbage truck guys come by every Monday and Thursday. This was their time. And uh, you know, the wonderful maintenance guys here at the Mission Hills Country Club, they got to do their work. So I want to hear from you. Did this video resonate with you at all? And uh, if so, or if not, let me know down below in the comment section. And as always, come on now, got to get out there today and make it another incredible day. Oh, and one more thing. I know you want one. I know you love it. What's the Right Shot t-shirt? It's long sleeve, short sleeve. You know what? If you will help support me get the word out there on webtennis.com, on my teaching, Brent Abel, uh, but specifically on what's the right shot, you know what I'll do? I'll give you a 50% discount on the t-shirt and I'll also give you as a free gift, as a way of saying thank you for uh, helping support me and getting the word out there. Um, I'm going to give you one of my tennis instructional video courses. Uh, you get to choose whatever one you want. There's seven courses you can, you can uh, choose from. Uh, but just go on over to webtennisgear.com, order your shirt, and, uh, and then I'll go ahead and get you the, the course of your choice along with that 50% discount. And then once you get the shirt, come on, man, take a picture, send it to me, let me put it up on the, on the website. And uh, look, thanks in advance for your support. I really appreciate it. And now it's time to get out there and make it a spectacular day.